Despite the recent community quarantine as declared by President Rodrigo Duterte, we will continue to honor God and make disciples. And temporarily, we are shifting our physical worship services to live stream. That is why we're inviting you to join us online via facebook.com slash victorypioneer with the following schedules. Saturday, 5 p.m. Sunday, 11 a.m. 1 p.m. 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. and our Wednesday service at 7 p.m. as well. With that said, we can continue honoring God through our giving. And the good news is you can give online and we would be coming out with more updates uh, through our comments section below. If you have prayer requests or even answered prayers, you can write them down through this link victorypioneer.org slash prayer requests. Now, as we're shifting our worship services via online, we are also moving our discipleship journey online, and we will be providing more updates through our official Facebook account and even our official Instagram account. So do check those out as we give more updates in the coming days. While we cannot meet physically because of the community quarantine, Here's the great news about this. You could still do your Victory Group online. In fact, one example is by communicating with your Victory Group members through Facebook Messenger, whether that's through the audio setting or the video conference. And no matter what is happening in our nation today, by the grace of God, we will continue to honor God and make disciples.
my weakest moments, in my darkest hour. You're the God who hears me when I'm crying out for help. When my fate is shaken and I'm all struck down. You're the God who sees me. You're the God who saves. Washed in grace, you're the God who loves me. Can't keep it to myself. I wanna shout your story. I'm gonna sing your praise. You're the God who's mighty. You set my heart ablaze. We sing, I will bless. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, we sing, I will bless you, Lord. I will bless you, Lord. Ties all around, rising. Still, your faithful love surrounds. When the shadows are all around, consuming. Oh, my sight is fading out, blinding. You remind me of your son. Resounding, oh, oh, my soul will rise to sing. You command the winds to fade. You still my heart with your embrace. You are my peace. You anchor my heart. Now, 
Yes, God, that is the prayer of our hearts this very day, that you will be our peace, Lord, in our present circumstance, 
that you would continue to anchor our hearts and we could have the courage and the strength to put all our trust to our God, our personal God, our Lord, and our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today, we will observe communion and we hope that you have your prepared bread and juice with you and your family. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You know what, church? Communion is all about God and the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It's all about the forgiveness of our sins. It's all about the promise fulfilled by Jesus Christ himself. And we are to observe and to remember as an expression of our obedience and honor to our God. Join me in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for dying for us on the cross. Thank you, O oh God, that for being bruised and for your body being broken for us to be made whole once again you even said in your word that by your stripes we are healed and we appropriate that word in our present situation and circumstance this very day as we remember in faith and in gratefulness what you have done on the cross in jesus name let us all partake of the bread Lord Jesus, we are grateful for the shedding of your blood. You said in your word that without the shedding of your blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And so we are grateful that you see us right now, whiter than snow. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us all partake of the juice. To continue our worship to God, let me encourage you in our time of giving in Leviticus 27 verse 30. It says here, Every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Church, everything that we have now, everything that we enjoy, even the things that we desire in the near future comes from God. The scripture says every seed, every fruit, the beginning, the end, the result comes from God. So let's remember as we give today that tithing and our offerings is holy to the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for indeed you have blessed us with the ability to produce wealth that all we have right now comes from you and that we are to be grateful. Look at an expression of our worship is to give our tithes and worship to you. Lord, help us to continue to trust in you in this present situation because we all know that you are the God who provides for all our needs. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. After the preaching of the word, we will give you full details on how we could give online. Let's now welcome Pastor Lee Concepcion for the preaching of the word. Thank you very much for joining us online. This is our temporary solution to comply with our government directives, not to meet in public. And uh, for us, uh, we long for the day that we can all come together again. But right now, 
uh, we will use the tools that God has given us to be able to continue uh, to share the good news, for us to be able to worship, uh, for us to continue to encourage one another. Uh, tools that will advance God's kingdom. We will make use of every avenue for us to be able to, con- to share the good news. Now, uh, when Jesus came 2,000 years ago, uh, we had the Roman roads. Sinasabi nila yung Roman roads because there was peace uh, that, that the, the empire of Rome was able to uh, accomplish. So meron sin- tinatawag na Pax Romana. It's just interesting that today we have the internet as a tool to share the gospel. I believe that God will use uh, these difficulties and challenges that we're faced with to bring uh, people back to Him for people to understand who He is and that He is Lord and that He is in control of all things. The Apostle Paul actually wrote about this in this book, uh, the one that we've been studying in the Gospel, the book of Romans. He wanted to bring understanding. He wanted people to have unity in the faith. And so, sinulat niya tong uh, book of uh, Romans for us to be able to understand who God is. And in declaring that, uh, this is something that's made available for all of us. Alam natin na, na pag natutunan natin kung sino siya sa buhay natin, then that's how we can appreciate and, and trust that, that we will get through this season. There may be challenges that the enemy is trying to bring, uh, not just to our nation, but to the world. But we know that God is in control. Amen? Okay, so yun yung pag-uusapan natin. Now, uh, in this book, it's timely that we're, we'll be studying this because here we understand who God is. Here, Paul is trying to make sure that people would understand uh, the, this, this God that he is now serving. And as we serve him, uh, we will have a, a larger understanding of him. And as we understand him more, our faith is also built up. Now, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 1. And we're going to be reading from verses 16 uh, to verse 20. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to anyone, everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. For if the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth? For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them for His invisible attributes, namely His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they, have, they are without excuse. Join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you will give us wisdom, that you will give us faith to be able to continue to trust you, that in spite of all the challenges that we're faced with, that we will see you move and, and that you will accomplish what you want to accomplish through this. We may have a lot of questions. We may not understand everything. But we know, Lord, that you are in control and that you have a purpose for all of this. Lord, reveal yourself clearly to all of us that, uh, that we will understand you, we will understand the good news, and our role in being able to advance your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that you will anoint the preaching of your word, not from our own wisdom, but what you want us to hear and learn from. It will come directly from you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in all of the challenges that we're faced with, how do we respond? Nakikita natin ngayon sa, sa, ano, how do we respond to these challenges, the uncertainties, these challenging times? Alam naman natin that since the beginning of the year, sunod-sunod na yung mga ibang mga problema na nangyayari sa atin. But in, in all of that, we know that God is in control. Alam naman natin na, na we just have to align ourselves to Him and see how uh, we can continue to advance His kingdom. Now, in all of these things, nakikita natin na iba-iba yung reaction ng tao. There are people who are panicking. Uh, there are people who are uh, you know, responding in fear and uncertainty. 
meron tayong sunod-sunod na mga fake news. Meron hindi na natin nalalaman kung tunay yung, na, yung balita na, na nadidinig natin or hindi. And so in all of these things, we, we have to acknowledge that there are things that are fearful. We have to acknowledge that there are things that uh, we have to be able to build our faith. Marami tayong mga uncertainties we, with, with the disease, with politics, with the economy. Uh, what about our future? All of these things we need to be able to understand and have answers to. And in this, we have to be reminded of the character of God, to know Him and acknowledge Him for who He is. Once you see Him and understand uh, Him, then the fears that we are faced with can possibly be exchanged for faith. Na imbis na fear and reaction natin, we can react and respond in faith in all these situations. Now, I want to remind us once again in the text that we read earlier, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. I want to go back to this verse and there's something that God wants to reveal in this. Ang sinasabi dyan that the righteousness of God is revealed. Na ganito dapat yung response natin. We are to, to, uh, to live by faith. Yan yung understanding natin. We have to build that up in our lives. Whether uh, we understand what, whatever is what's going on around us or not, alam natin na merong good news. It's not fake news. Then as we learn more about Him, that's what God will continue to build up in all of our lives. He will reveal Himself. He has actually revealed Himself already. Yun yung makikita natin dito, that the righteousness of God is revealed. There's a certain lifestyle. There's a certain um, way of life, living right, na makikita natin sa tinuturo sa, sa salita ng Diyos. And so that's what we need to go back to. That's what we need to understand. Now in verse 18, there is a contrast that's happening. In verse 18, sinasabi dito, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. When we're seeing this, there's something, a righteousness that's being revealed, but right here also that there's also the wrath of God that is being revealed. We have to remember that God is holy. He is, uh, he is perfect in every way. He is loving. And because He is holy, He cannot coexist. Hindi siya pwede magsama sa unrighteousness or unholiness. So the wrath of God is actually, pag, pag, pag uh, tinitingnan natin yan, hindi yan yung, yung galit ng, uh, pag inisip kasi natin ng wrath, it's normally the, the anger of man, the, the wrath that someone might have on another person. But when we're talking about the wrath of God, it's not in that same sense. The wrath of God is showing how apart He is from the unrighteousness that is being lived out in the world. So when the wrath of God is being revealed, it is Him, uh, because of His holiness, makikita mo yung separation niya sa unrighteousness and all the wrong things that we see in the world. Yun yung, yun yung distinction niya. The whole of heaven is against ungodliness, unrighteousness of men. Ang sinasabi pa dito, there's actually a suppression of the truth. Hindi na lumalabas kung ano yung katotohanan. And we see that all the time. When you look at your Facebook page, there's so many different news that are coming out. Hindi mo na alam kung ano yung tunay, ano yung hindi. And, and, and based on what is revealed to us, minsan nagiging ganun na yung reaction natin. Natatakot tayo, we respond in fear because we're not getting the right information. And so in all of these things, when we look at God's Word, here is something that is, Paul is bringing us back to the truth. When we understand who God is and we, we receive Him for that, then our faith is built up. And that's my prayer for all of us. And as we get through this series, as we get through this preaching, the yung faith natin ang, ang lalabas dito. But before we understand the good news, we'll look at certain things that Paul is writing here and wanting us to understand. Here in Romans chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. 
na palinawa na ng Panginoon kung sino siya. The evidence is there in all of creation. What is revealed in all of these things? Uh, the, his in, invisible attributes, namely, His eternal power and divine nature has been clearly perceived. Nakikita natin yung power ni Lord. Nakikita natin that throughout eternity, He is the most powerful being in creating all of these things in this world. I don't know if you enjoy being in nature, but just being out in, in nature, makikita mo how amazing uh, God's creation is. Whether you enjoy being in the mountains, or maybe you're a beach person, yun yun na enjoy mo, in all of these things, whether up in the mountains or in the sea, we see His amazing creation and His imagination and His glory and, and all the things that He's able to accomplish for us. And He made this all for us to be able to enjoy. Now, uh, pag pinakita niya lahat yan, wala na tayong excuse. There is no excuse for us not to understand that His righteousness, the righteousness of God is already re- revealed. Pinakita niya na lahat ito sa atin. And so, wala na tayong excuse. The evidence of God in creation is already there. And it's just for us to be able to acknowledge Him and to uh, admit that we need more of Him. Now, as we continue in this, people understand who God is. It's clearly, plainly seen by everyone. And yet, there are those that deny Him. In verse 21, For they knew God, for although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or gave thanks and give thanks to Him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Okay? The evidence is already there. But ito, nakikita natin yung mga, ang reaction ng tao is that they would not honor Him. The wrath of God is given because people choose to ignore the evidence of who God is. And because of that, uh, wala na siya. The honor that is supposed to be given to God, it's not there anymore. The gratitude that, that we're supposed to express to God for everything that He's created for us, nawawala na rin yon. And then the, what, what comes out is uh, futile thinking. We have foolish hearts that are being revealed, that are, are darkened. All of these things are a choice. This starts with us choosing to ignore who God is and choosing to live our lives our own way. Doon nagkakaroon ng, ng problema. The wrath of God is being revealed through that. All right? Ito yung mga ibang sinasabi dito, the choices that people make. All right? In verse 23, 22 and 23, claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. So kung ano man yung nire-reveal ni Lord, hindi na yun yung naiintindihan ng tao. There, there is an exchange that is happening. Right? Uh, an exchange of what is not right and people saying that it's correct. And what is, whatever is correct, people are saying that it's no longer correct. There's an exchange that's happening. When God is the one is th- that should be worshipped, instead it's the creation, instead of the Creator that is now being worshipped. Now people sometimes will ask, okay, how can a loving God, how can a loving God send people to hell? But sometimes people think with all the things that are happening today, now this is the judgment of God, this is the wrath of God being poured out to a certain group of people. And people are saying, how can a loving God send people to hell? That's assuming that people are good. Pag inisip mo na tama ang mga tao and, and they're not going against God, then, then maybe there is, some, there is a God that, that is not just in sending people to hell. But the better question is, the proper question is, why would sinful man actually deserve to go to heaven. Paano ngayon tayo? The truth is, all of us have, have veered away. All of us in different times of our lives have rebelled against God uh, and, and the sin that the world is committing because of the choices that people make in ignoring who God is, 
it's being revealed more and more. All right? The sinfulness of man increases. They exchange the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve creatures rather than the Creator. Dumadagdag yung mga kasalanan. And we see this more and more as, as the verses uh, uh, unfold. In verse 29, they, filled, they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. I read that list and it just brings heaviness inside of me. It brings heaviness and understanding that some of these things is, is part of, of our lifestyle sometimes. Minsan, ganyan yung pagbubuhay natin. We, we gossip about things. We slander. Okay? We, we get boastful with our accomplishments. All of these things will just lead to the wrath of God. So, imbis na isipin natin that we deserve heaven and we deserve all good things, the, the truth is man deserves the wrath of God. Mas yan yung babagay sa atin. Because of this type of rebellion, this, this type of thinking, this type of lifestyle that we have, this is what we deserve. We deserve the wrath of God. We deserve to be separated from Him. All of our sins have separated us from Him. That's what we actually deserve. And so when all of these things, we see it in, in Romans chapter 1, verse 24, 26, and 28, that God gave them up. Not that God gives up on us. That instead, God is uh, acknowledging and giving us to the choices that we're making. Okay? This is the grace of God at work. Dahil yan yung pinili ng mga tao, because that's how they want to live their lives, God is just telling them, okay, if that is your choice, if your choice is not to, to follow me, then, I, then I'm turning you over to that. I'm turning you over to your desire. And so sabi dito sa verse 24, Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. He continues in verse 26, For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions. Yan yung ginagawa niya. Dahil yun yung pinili niyo, then He's turning you over to that. He's being patient in all of these things, waiting and waiting and waiting for us to respond to Him in faith. But there is a point, may hangganan din ang Panginoon. This is a long, long time, but there will be a point that because of our choice, our rebellion, our sin, God will turn you over and give you up to your sins. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to the detestable, uh, to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. All of these things because of the choices that we're making. A choice to go on our own, a choice to ignore God, ignore the evidence of who God is. Paul is reminding us, now, when we make, continue making that choice, that He will turn us over to our desires. He will turn us over to our sins. And the thing is, in all of these things, we have a choice on how we live our lives. Every day we can make a choice. Am I going to follow God or am I going to follow my own will? Now, God has given us a free will to choose Him or to reject Him. But we cannot choose the consequences of our choice. Pag hindi natin siya pinili, uh, then there is the wrath of God that we can wait for or to expect. But if we follow Him, then there's something else that God wants for us. To have a relationship with Him, to be built up in Him, for our faith to continue to grow. So pwede natin piliin kung, ano yung, kung paano tayo mabubuhay. Pero hindi natin mapipili kung ano yung consequence ng pinili natin. Now we understand, if the righteousness of God is revealed and we follow that, then faith is built up. We have a new lifestyle. The righteous shall live by faith. 
But if we choose to reject Him, to ignore Him, we choose to live our own lives, then we have to be ready with the consequences of our choices. Now, in all of these things that we've been talking about, okay, marami mga tao na pinipili to rebel against God, to sin against God, that deserve the wrath of God. Not, not only are they rejecting God, they're actually promoting something else. In verse 32, though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, all of our choices, sinful choices, would, would lead to death. They not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Hindi lang sila contento na pipiliin nila yung, yung rebellion nila, yung kasalanan nila in, uh, over God, but they're actually promoting other people to do the same thing. Hindi lang, uh, uh, it, it's not just enough for them to live that own life. They will actually promote it. And we see it all over. I don't know, uh, nung, nung lumalaki ako, meron kaming mga, kilala nyo ba yung mga konsintador? Or yung mga bad influence sa buhay natin? Yung, yung mga kaibigan mo na merong promotor sa mga kasalanan at kalokohan? Uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes that was me. I was the one that was promoting all these things. But when, when that is exactly the, what is being described here, now, dahil gusto nila na meron silang kasalanan, gusto nila kasama ka rin nila sa kasalanan nila. Now, that's not God's intention. Now, in, in, in the writer of this book, we know that the Apostle Paul wrote this book. And, and for him, uh, just to give you a background over his life, he was always a passionate man. Alam natin that he was a man of conviction. He gave up everything for what he believed in. Before he was a Christian, ganun na siya. When he became a Christian, he was, ev- he was uh, even increased in that ability. We know that Paul was a Jew that was born outside of Israel. He was born in Tarsus. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He, was, he would follow all of those rules. Okay? And he was even giving approval to the death of people. Because he felt that in the rules of the Pharisees, in the laws of God, that person deserved death. But once he had an encounter with God, once he understood who God is, that same passion that he had was now converted to him advancing God's kingdom. Nagbago yung puso niya. Nung binago siya ni Lord, right, in turn to a passion to make sure that God would be glorified. He chose to follow Jesus. And he wanted Jesus to be revealed in his life. The rest of his life as a Christian was to make sure that he was living according to God's ways. Ganun din sana sa ating lahat. We have many choices that we need to make. In a summary of everything that we talked about, the righteousness of God has been revealed. We also that the wrath of God is revealed. Not that it's being poured out. There will be a judgment where the wrath of God will be poured out. But when we're talking about the wrath of God here, it's the sinful choices that we're making that God is against. So with these two things being available, and we see the example of Paul wanting to make sure that God would be revealed in his life, meron akong matatanong sa inyo. What will be revealed in your life? Ano yung gusto mong mapalabas sa buhay mo ngayon? Would it be the righteousness of God? Or would it be the wrath of God? Or the, the choices, the sinful choices that we make? My prayer is for all of us is that we would choose the first to choose to be able to reflect God in the things that we're doing, to be able to reveal the righteousness of God in the choices that we make in our lifestyle and and how we treat one another. During this time of difficulties and and challenges, how many times are we thinking, kailangan akong bumili ng grocery, kailangan akong bumili ng ng alcohol. Imbes na iniisip natin, papano natin masishare kung sino si Jesus sa buhay nila. I was just encouraged that some of our pastors and some of our, our, our church members as they're waiting in line 
to buy their goods. They're sharing the, the good news to those that are around them. Yung mga iba, dinsan kasi iniiwan nila yung cart nila, tapos bibili muna sila, and then babalik at babalik. But once they're there in the line, three hours, four hours for, for some of the stories that I've heard, when they come back and they finally settle, they start sharing the good news. They start sharing peace. They start sharing who, how faithful God is, that God is in control. This is a great opportunity for all of us. An opportunity for us to magnify who God is. To be able to reveal His goodness and His faithfulness. Instead of sharing the wrath, the anger that is normally there, we can share the good news. Now it's up to us to make that choice. Are we going to live in rebellion and sin? Or are we going to share about the good news? Are we going to share about His salvation that is now made available to us? So I go, I go back to Romans chapter 16 and 17. Dito natin makikita na ito yung sinasabi ni Paul. I am not ashamed of the gospel. He is not ashamed of it. He will share it every opportunity. We will not shrink back as Christians today. We will not shrink back, but we will declare the truth. We will build faith. We will bring encouragement to people. We will tell them about the gospel that there is good news for it is the power of God for salvation. We can have salvation. We can have eternal life. We don't have to fear situations now because alam natin na God will save us through this. There's a power of God that is at work that will bring us salvation. Ano yung kailangan? To everyone who believes. Maniwala ka lang sa Kanya. Paniwala mo sa Kanya. Put your faith in Him and we will have the salvation. We will have the power of God be revealed in all of our lives. The righteousness of God revealed. The wrath of God is revealed. But in our lives, as we believe Him, the power of God will be revealed in all of our lives. I want to encourage you with that. To the Jews first and also to the Greeks. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. That's the choice that we have to make. Maybe this is the first time you're watching us online. Maybe this, uh, you've been coming to victory for, for a season. But as we live by faith, that is when the righteousness of God will be revealed in your life and mine. It is a choice that we make. A choice to turn away from our own desires, our own sinfulness, our own rebellion, and choosing to follow someone that gave up his life for you and for me. For us to be able to experience the good things that he has in store for all of us. Let me just encourage you with that and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that if there is any fear that is present in our lives, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you reveal yourself to us the same way you revealed yourself to the Apostle Paul. And from that, you turn his heart from a man of passion for uh, the law to a man of passion towards who you are and towards the gospel. If there are doubts in our lives and questions, Lord, that we can't answer, I pray, Lord, that you reveal yourself to us. That we will be able to look to you and, and build our faith in all of these things. Lord, I pray, Lord, that each one of us, Lord, will be able to live by faith. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your righteousness will be revealed in all of our lives. It starts with believing you, trusting you, declaring that Jesus is Lord over our lives. I thank you, Lord, that you are in control of these situations. The enemy, whatever the enemy has meant for evil, you can turn it to our good for those who love you. I thank you, Lord, that this sickness, this negative thing that's happening all across the world, that you will be able to use that to turn people back to you. 
Lord, right now, there's, there's nothing that we can offer. We, 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 it's been proven that we are lacking in any of control, that we can't control anything. There was so much faith to, for the year 2020. But since the beginning, Lord, all these different challenges have happened. Lord, I pray, Lord, that all of these will be turned around and that faith will rise up. Instead of fear, faith will rise up. People declaring who you are. And give us the boldness, Lord. Just like the Apostle Paul was saying that he is not ashamed of the gospel. Lord, give us the faith that we can share the good news to those around us. We thank you, Lord. You are a faithful God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us. I do hope that we will have opportunities for us to join once again. Sana matigil na tong lahat and so we can we get to meet you and we get to disciple one another and to encourage one another as the Apostle Paul was telling the church in Rome. I hope that we can, as we gather together right now, stay safe. And as we gather together, we will be all declaring the goodness and faithfulness of God in our lives. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Thank you very much for joining us in our online service. To also give you an avenue to worship God through giving, wherever you are, here are some options for you. First, you may give online through our website, victory.org.ph slash give. You may also give your tithes via GCash through the following steps. And you can continue to send your prayer request by going to victory.org slash prayer request. Because even if we are not able to meet face to face, know that we are praying for all of you. And we will continue to stand with you in faith at this time. God bless you all.